Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome to the best damn places in the galaxy. Here, in the galactic core itself, one of the prime destinations for all explorers is the supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A. Existing right at the centre of the galaxy, it is a force to be reckoned with and a location of almost legendary and mythical quality. But Sagittarius A is not the only attraction within the Galactic Core, for the Galactic Core itself is an amazing place to visit. And being close to a star is the only location that is reminiscent of normal to human inhabited space. But as you travel away from those bright objects, you will find that the brightness of the Galactic Core itself is almost a challenge to any star. For here, there is a true absence of any blackness, for no matter where you go, you are always lit by a million stars. In this area of space, it is so densely packed by stars that you are never more than a light year's jump away from another system. But despite the constant presence of ambient light, many of the planets here will remind you of home. But unlike home, where the galactic core is an ever-present cloud in the vast distance, here, the core is a band which surrounds you in all directions. A band that is so bright and fills the area with so much ambience light that no matter how far away you travel from a star, your ship is forever bathed in brightness. The only true shadows here are on the dark side of a planet, but even there anyone standing on the surface will look up to this sky and never see anything black. Whilst the areas around the galactic core are rich in both neutron stars and black holes, none of them will prepare you for the first time you see Sagittarius A. One of the few black holes that can fully destroy your ship, it can still be seen from many hundreds of light seconds away. And such is the power of its gravitational field that it will distort space into an unrecognisable form. But whilst Sagittarius A is the main attraction here for most explorers, many often forget its companion, Source 2. A large blue-white star, nearly five and a half times the size of Earth's own sun. Even the brightness of this immense star though, struggles to block out the ever-present lightness of the galactic core itself. At close to 26,000 light years from Earth, a journey to Sagittarius A is a serious undertaking. But it is at this point, the arrival here, that many explorers decide to turn back. For those though willing to continue on, they will soon discover that there is much more out there beyond this galactic center. For out here, even the most mundane of discoveries can contain surprises. Anywhere else, this high metal content planet would perhaps barely be worth a cursory glance, but here, with such a powerful backdrop, it is a very different story. And the somewhat rarer discoveries, such as this rocky ice world with atmosphere, have an eerie presence here, with its uncanny similarity in colours to the galactic core. Sagittarius A may seem an impossible distance for many, but it is a journey adventurers are embarking upon, even in ships as small as a Sidewinder. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys and girls next time. This is the first step of my deep space landing expeditions. The plan is to head out into the void, into the deep unknown, in order to find out what exists on the planetary surfaces out here. At the moment, I'm just over 1,000 light years into space. This is Bernard's Loop, right near the Horsehead Nebula. And this planet is perhaps one of the most visually impressive I've seen so far. The shadows here are very dark as you can see, a result of a very low lying sun, but that hasn't reduced the impact of the Horseb Nebula there in the background. And although that nebula is actually bright, you can't see too much ambient light from it with the exception of the depths of some of the craters here. 